All right. Well, let me uh, let me introduce you. Um, good afternoon. Uh, anybody watching this on Facebook Live or picking it up later on? Uh, my name is John Federico. I am the Director of Advancement for Senior Community Services. And um, I'm here to welcome Percy Rosales of uh, PICO uh, to do a presentation for us today on um, saving money and improving fuel efficiency, energy efficiency in your home. So uh, Percy, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, well, hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today. And um, I'm really glad to talk to you today about um, what you can do to save energy and money in your home. Uh, I'm part of the PICO outreach team that used to do these talks all over the PICO service area um, at churches, uh, health fairs, many different types of places. Unfortunately, we're not able to be with you in person, but you'll still get the same information and some new updates on our very popular energy saving programs. So first I'd like to talk to you about our PICO lighting discounts program. And it's about light bulbs. I always tell people that the fastest and easiest thing you can do to start saving money in your home is to upgrade to some energy efficient light bulbs. Uh, LEDs are really the best on the market right now. Uh, we recommend that if you have an old incandescent bulb to switch it out for an LED. Now Pico is offering instant discounts on LEDs at participating retail stores. There are over I mean, hundreds of stores where these discounted bulbs are being sold. And it's great because they use 90% less energy than an incandescent bulb. That's a lot of savings. And they last 15 times longer. So you don't have to change the bulb as often. Now, they'll even save about $80 per bulb over the lifetime of the bulb. And they last for many years. If you want to find a retailer, uh, a participating retail location, you can find it on our website at pico.com slash lighting. You just put in your zip code and you'll see where we sell these discounted bulbs. When you go to the store, you just look in the light bulb section for a sticker. There might be a display that has the Pico logo on it. That means that those bulbs are discounted and the price is already built into the, the price. It's not like a, some new sticker or anything. They'll, they'll take the price right at checkout. They're discounted about $1 to $2 a piece, and that's to make the bulbs more affordable. So you can buy maybe a multi-pack if you have many bulbs in your home that you want to switch out. Um, again, we also sell uh, the bulbs online at our own website, and it's called the Pico Marketplace, and it's at Pico Marketplace. Dot com. You can purchase LED bulbs and many other energy efficiency measures as well. So that's a nice thing to check out. It's a new, new, new website. Um, and what I'll do is if anyone has questions, I'll, I'll save the questions for the end and I'll just move on to our next uh, program. Our next program revolves around rebates and the rebates are pretty great, especially if you're going to purchase a lot of new appliances or you're moving into a new home and you're, and you're gonna upgrade to a um, new water heater, new refrigerator, that sort of thing, you can get rebates for appliances and heating and cooling equipment if you buy the right uh, appliance. So let, let's talk about what you need to do. So if you purchase a qualifying appliance or heating and cooling equipment, you need to save the receipt and you mail it into Pico within uh, 180 days of the purchase and they'll mail you back a rebate for it. Now, the appliances and heating and cooling equipment that qualify um, are only Energy Star rated energy efficient appliances. So you can find out which appliances do qualify on our website, uh, pico.com. You can even um, look at a list by make and model just to make sure what you're getting does fall under the rebate program. And I did this in my home. Uh, it was very easy to do. Uh, I went to, I believe it was Sears, and I bought a, a washing machine. Uh, I was able to fill in the application very quickly online. Once I had my receipt, I mailed it in, and I got a check back. Uh, I believe at the time I got $25 for it. 
So I encourage anyone to do that. And if you know someone who just bought a house or you know that they're going to buy a lot of new things, let them know about this program because those uh, rebates can really add up, especially since some of the appliances and some of the heating and cooling equipments like um, outdoor uh, air conditioner, uh, they can, the, the rebates are into the hundreds of dollars. So it's a lot of savings. Okay. You can find out more at pico.com slash rebates. And again, all the eligibility requirements are there, all the um, information, and the, you can either print out an application or just fill it out online. Okay. Uh, now we have another program that's specifically for refrigerators, and it involves recycling old refrigerators. Uh, refrigerators, uh, they can be very old and still work. You know, uh, some people have refrigerators that are 20 years old, maybe 30 years old, and they'll still make ice, they'll still keep your food cold, and they work fine, except that they're just not as efficient, and they cost a lot more money than running a new, more efficient refrigerator. So, you can call Pico, and we'll send someone out to pick up your refrigerator, and they'll recycle it at a local facility. They'll recycle over 95% of that refrigerator, so it's good for the environment. And you'll get a $75 um, rebate for it. And it's nice because now you don't have to pay someone to take the refrigerator out for you. They'll come to your home. Now, prior to COVID-19, we would go into your home and take the refrigerator out. But for the safety of our customers and, and the crews uh, that work for Pico, we are offering what we call a no contact pickup. And that means that they're not going to enter your home. Um, but they will come to the porch or the driveway, or if your refrigerator is located in an outbuilding, like a garage or something like that, they will be able to take your fridge. Um, and you don't have to interact with the staff at all. You can stay inside. They will come with, um, protective equipment like gloves and masks. So it's safe for everyone and they won't be there long. They're very fast. They can take your fridge out in about five minutes. So if you want to look into this program, uh, it's really great when you go on pico.com, you can register for it, and you can also have them pick up a couple of window air conditioners. Uh, they won't come out just for the air conditioners. You have to sign up for the fridge. If you do, you can let them know ahead of time, and they'll take a couple air conditioners, and you get a small rebate for that as well, okay? And finally, we have something called the Energy Assessment Program. Um, people really love this program. Prior to COVID-19, uh, we had an energy expert go inside your home and they would look at everything in your home, top to bottom, and give you information on what you could do to save energy, improvements that you could make, answer any questions, and they would tell you about any problems that they saw. But now we're doing a virtual assessment. So, with the virtual assessment, it's a little bit different. You sign up for it on pico.com. Uh, you also give out the phone number to call. And what they'll do is that you will get a link to show you on your phone. And when you get the link, they will be able to see through your camera. And they will direct you as you walk through your home and say, you know, could you look up into that part of the attic? Could you look at this pipe over here? Could you go into the basement? Could you look at this base underneath the store? That sort of thing. And they'll direct you to what they need to look at. Um, it's a very interesting uh, process because they'll tell you all sorts of things about your home. They can answer questions. And I felt it was very easy to do. I had it done myself in my home when we were testing out the program. So it's a $150 value and it only costs $24.50. Um, if you were to pay a private company to do this, it is very expensive, but for $24.50, it's a very, very good deal. And you'll get a personalized report on what you can do to save energy. They will email that to you. And you may qualify to receive some energy saving measures as well. Okay. Now, if you want to schedule an appointment, we're not doing the uh, virtual assessments just yet. What we are doing is taking. Um, reservations for future appointments so you can be closer to the front of the line so if you'd like to do that you can call 855-312-5923 okay that's 
312-5923 for the energy assessment program. Now that program is eligible for anyone uh, regardless of their income. But there is another program that is for low income customers only that is similar. And that's called the free energy checkup. Sort of the same thing. You may get different energy measures. Uh, it's also done virtually over the phone, but it is a different phone number. So I'm gonna tell you that phone number as well. Uh, now, if you wanna be in this program, you have to qualify for it based on your income. Um, the income qualifications are on pico.com, so you can look at them there, but it's 150% of the poverty line per household. Is That's the income requirement. Uh, and that number is 855-270-7327. That's 855-270-7327. Seven three two seven for the free energy checkup. Okay. Um, I want to talk a bit about some tips as well. Um, we have I've mentioned our website pico.com, great website with a lot of tools. If you go to pico.com/slash my account, you can sign in. Uh, and if you're not, if you haven't signed in before, you can register for an online Pico account where you can see information about your bill. Uh, you can pay your bill automatically and do a lot of very useful tasks there. Um, there are also some very useful online tools at Pico.com, such as energy calculators, where you can calculate how much a central air conditioner is going to cost you, or you could calculate how much your heater is going to cost you throughout the year. Very interesting, and they're all free and very easy to use. So I encourage everyone to check out our website for more information, but also to use those free tools. We also have um, some low-cost and no-cost tips. Um, the low-cost and no-cost tips are very easy things you can do in your home to get started. Uh, you can do them yourself. You don't need a Pico program for them. I'll just talk about a few of them. Uh, for example, winter is going to come soon. Uh, it gets colder outside. One of the things you can do to warm up your home is to make full use of the sunlight. Open the, the blinds, open the drapes during the day, let the sun into the house. It warms up the house a little bit. Uh, it's the opposite in the, in the summer. You know, if you're going to leave the home for a long time, it's a good idea to close them so that the hot sun doesn't come in and heat up your home and cause the air conditioners to work uh, harder to cool your home. Uh, it's also a good idea to lower your thermostat we feel you can start by lowering it two degrees and see how comfortable you feel. But just two degrees will give you a lot of savings. Uh, and if you feel comfortable after doing that, maybe try another two degrees if, if it doesn't bother you that much. Um, but it's always good to test and see where, where that lower limit is. So maybe you can get a little savings there. A lot of people don't know that you can lower the temperature on your water heater. Some water heaters come out of the factory set to a very high temperature and it's a scalding temperature that you wouldn't want to use anyway, you should go check what kind you have, see if you can lower the temperature. We recommend a temperature of about 120 degrees is pretty good. If it's higher than that, um, you're just wasting energy. Okay. Now that we're coming into the winter, it's another good idea to seal up your home, seal up your windows, find out if you have any air leaks and things like that. Uh, it's one of the great things that the energy assessment team can help you with as well. But if you just want to go ahead and buy um, weather stripping for your windows, it's a great idea to do it. You can buy a big pack of them, uh, make a project out of it, and seal all the windows around your home for the winter time. Uh, another thing people don't always think about is the dryer. It's very important when you use the dryer to change the lint trap every time. It's not only a fire hazard if you don't do that, but the lint trap will make it very hard for the air to circulate and your dryer won't be able to dry your clothes as quickly. So you run it more and you use more energy. So always change the, the lint trap after each use. It's soon gonna be too cold to do this, but in the summer, it's not a bad idea to try to line dry your clothes or line dry a, a blanket or something like that when you can. That'll just save you money on a load, of, um, on a load of, in the dryer. So it's something that people used to do a lot and it's very easy to do. It will dry your clothes very well. And finally, replace the filters on your air conditioner. 
replace the filters on your central heating units. Always a good idea to have a clean filter. Uh, those filters uh, fill up with a lot of lint and dust. Um, it's not good for the air quality. Uh, it also, having a clean um, filter allows that appliance to process the air more easily and more efficiently. Uh, for an AC unit or a furnace, we recommend twice a year or as recommended by the manufacturer. And finally, I wanna talk about something that um, uses a lot of energy that people don't know about. And it's called phantom usage. Now, phantom usage is, for example, when you have a television or any appliance and you're not using it, um, it is still charging or still pulling a little bit of electricity, okay? Uh, for example, oh, the television. Hang on. Let me, uh, let me open yeah. that up. All right, hang on. Uh, I've, I've got to make a phone call to loop some people in on this. Uh, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Um, you know, when, like when you're watching TV, obviously when the TV's on, it's using a lot of energy. When you turn it off, it's really on standby mode. And that way, when you use a remote control, it will see the signal from the remote control. Uh, it's the same for gaming systems. Um, a lot of computers will just go to sleep, but they're still on and using a little bit of energy. Um, so one of the things you can do is to get a power strip that will cut off the electricity from the outlet to the uh, electronic equipment. Um, if you don't do that, uh, that phantom usage can add up to almost 25% of your bill. And that's a lot. And if you consider how many electronics we have in our home, we have more electronics now in our home than we used to. And as long as they're plugged in, they are carrying a little bit of electricity and that can add up over time. So you can unplug your appliances when they're not in use um, or get the power strip. And on the PicoMarketplace.com, we sell smart power strips. Now the smart power strips are really great because they'll let you um, plug in certain things that you can control either through a control device, sometimes it's a remote, sometimes it is a one particular plug in that power strip that will control all the others. And it also has some plugs that never turn off. Uh, there are certain things you probably don't want to turn off if you have a cable box or something like that. The cable box needs to be on all the time to receive the um, channel information. You know, so that you could put in the always on plug. The other things like the TV, you can put in a plug that will uh, cut off its electricity when it's not in use. And that will help you a lot with that phantom usage. And you can buy those smart power strips at picomarketplace.com. It has a lot of other really great things like uh, programmable thermostats, um, again, light bulbs. Uh, it really is a great place to buy energy efficiency equipment. Okay. So does anyone have any questions on that or um, any other programs or anything energy related? I'd be happy to, to answer any questions. Hello? Yep. Light, light. Uh, Percy, I have a group of people who just joined us on uh, speakerphone. So I'm, I'm gonna get questions from them as well. Thank you. Uh, the first question in the chat is, what do you recommend for modems or cable boxes? Do they always have to be on if you are living in an area where you use a hotspot? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I would recommend that you leave the modem on. Uh, I know that modems, all the ones I have, they do have um, periodic updates to their firmware. And that's basically just the, you know, wh whatever, um, internet provider you have uh, will connect with, let's say you have a Netgear modem, it'll just send it new information to improve its operating system. And it comes from time to time and you want to have the modem on and connected so it can receive that and be in the best working order when you need to use it. Um, that goes for cable boxes too. Like I said, the cable box will get constant information. Um, those are the only two things I can think of that really uh, need to stay on. Um, 
there are some obvious things like uh, microwaves or, or kitchen appliances like that. Um, if you shut off the electricity to them, they have a built-in clock. The built-in clock might reset itself, and that could be a little annoying if you keep resetting it all the time. So you could leave something like that on, but that's really up to you. Um, what I do in my home is that uh, wherever we watch TV, there's the greatest amount of electronics. And I put everything that isn't the, um, the modem into a uh, power strip that can be shut off. Uh, and it's controlled by another appliance, or sometimes we also have a little, um, a little uh, remote control that just shuts it off when I leave the room. Awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody on, um, on the phone have any questions? Percy, I'm gonna ask you to do me a favor if possible. Mm -hmm. Can you yeah. hear me? Yeah, I, I, I can't. Hang on one second. Can you repeat this on out? Can I give you our teleconference number and can we repeat this right after this on the teleconference? Sure. Great. Okay. So I'm sorry uh, to all of you on the teleconference that I joined you in late. Um, as soon as we finish with the Zoom presentation, uh, Percy is going to call this number and join you to do the presentation uh, over again. Um, in the meantime, do any of you have any questions? I do. Okay. I'm contemplating buying a new gas uh, boiler for my home, uh, residential boiler. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm planning on getting a Wild McLean. Well, how do I know the most efficient boiler to buy? Are they rated by SEER or ACLU ratings? Yes. Yeah, they are rated um, by, by SEER. I believe also there is um, the federal designation, uh, the Energy Sense sticker, that's that yellow sticker um, that you'll see on, a, on the box um, next to like an Energy Star sticker. But the yellow one, the Energy Sense sticker will tell you on average how much it'll cost you per year to use that appliance. Um, I would always begin with something energy star rated uh try to find the best rating you can um and then check to see if it's one of the qualifying appliances on the pico website um i've also found that lately some some of the the dealers or like if you go to some place like lowe's for example they are very knowledgeable and can even tell you there if it does qualify for that rebate so um they can even help you. Some of them even have printed applications right in the store. So you can fill it out right there. Uh, so you just, that might be something you want to ask. But it's always great to um, switch over to gas. I don't know if you're switching over from some other um, type of heating source. Uh, but I know that Pico does have um, incentives to switch over to gas. And those incentives for, for buying something like what you're talking about, uh, it's a lot of money. So you can definitely check um, uh, the programs on gas conversion at pico.com. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have one on the Zoom chat. Uh, when using the Phantom Power Strip, uh, turn off the strip, but the power strip is still plugged into the wall outlet. Does the power strip pull a lot of power? Uh, no, the power strip pulls a very little power. It definitely um, offsets, you know, the power you were using. It, it is uh, a definite savings over not having one. Great. Mm -hmm. uh, any questions on the phone line? Nope. Okay. Uh, any, any questions on Zoom? Nothing new on Zoom at the moment. Okay. All right. Well, um, I apologize to the folks on the Uber conference, but we're gonna wrap up the call here on Zoom. And then uh, Percy, if you can call 484-209-0886, um, that'll get you right into this conference call. Uh, and if, if you don't mind going back over what you started with, yes. that'd be super. It's 484, could you say it again? Yep, 484-209-0886. Um, and if you have any uh, documents or handout type things that we can email to people, 
feel mm -hmm. free to email those to me. You've got my email address, mm -hmm. and Farah and I will take care of getting them into the hands of uh, uh, the folks that signed up for today. Okay, sounds good. Um, so I'll call right now. Great. All right. I'll end this. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. See you soon. Thank you. Okay. Just call.